All right, welcome all. So quick announcement. First thing first, this week is the last week before the June holiday start. So we are looking at June holiday, four weeks. A reminder, those of you having regular classes on the weekdays, your lesson has been rescheduled to the weekend. So of, of, of course, those of you who are already attending weekend class, there's no changes to you. Just that if you're attending weekday classes, uh, your class is being scheduled to the weekend. Maybe you can come to this class as well if you want. And also, I just give out the on-site students the textbook for the June holiday. So online student, you will receive this book soon, I hope. Okay, you know why I use I hope? Because there's a problem. The, we print so many books until the machine in JB breaks down. So it's like, boom. So now, I only have books enough for half a cohort. So we're giving up to those who are on site first. And those who are online, we are going to print the remaining as soon as possible on Monday over the Malaysia side. And they will deliver to Singapore as soon as possible. And we, de de we have to deliver to your house as soon as possible. Okay, so these are the two books. I hope that it will arrive before Saturday, next Saturday. Okay. Now, this two books, one of that is called The Secrets and Close. Look at this. This is a very special book. We use string by. It's handmade one, you know. Use string one by one. You can open and close. 1,000 times, it will not break. Just like my fit foam. It won't break. It tests it, you see. And it can open fully. See this? Oh, good, right? Expensive. The binding itself is so expensive. The string itself. Okay. So this is what you will have. The secret and close. That is the Bible. If you are a senior, the senior will tell you about this thing. Okay. Then we have one more book. That is called book three. It consists of all the question bank of all the different chapter. Okay. And we are going to complete these two books in just four weeks. Then after that, I will have to set up another book that will be around end of June. That will be on the grade A questions of the different chapter. So we have to go through the grade A questions after the June holiday. That's nice. Now it's a holiday. I hope that you are happy that it's a holiday now. That you have more time. Maybe you don't really have a lot of time to go out to Orchard. But you do have time to study. That's a good thing. It's enough for you to be happy about. I was telling Wei Shen that uh, it's better than you are attending school in school early in the morning, reach home at night, at night go for tuition. It's no time to study. That would be even worse. Now, holiday, you got 24 hours for you to study and collate everything. That's good. We are at the last part of nuclear radioactive decay. Nuclear is actually a big part, a big chapter in the syllabus. That's why last two years, your seniors are very happy. You know why? Because it was so difficult. And last year, it was taken out of the A-level due to the COVID. But the very good students are not happy. Because the very good students last year, they all know that this chapter is the one that made the difference between A and B. And that's why they are very upset that it was taken out of the entire syllabus for the A-level. There are three parts to nuclear. The first part of nuclear is not so important. It's on a wonderful experiment that proved to us that the nucleus is small, heavy, dense, and positive. That one, usually we, will, we won't test. The second part of nuclear is very important, but luckily, if you look at our notes for second part of nuclear, our notes are very good and very detailed. It involves calculating the binding energy required to break a nucleus to the P and N. It also involves using the three methods to find the energy release during fusion and fusion. The second part. The one we got SOP. The third part, unfortunately, today is the part whereby we call it the grade A chapter. It's not easy. As there's no SOP, Mr. Sim cannot give you SOP to solve the third part of nuclear. This is on radioactive decay. Now, this last part of nuclear is not focused on calculating the energy release during fusion or fission. Instead, it's more interested to find out how many nuclei have decayed, have undergone the reaction, how many have not, 
So when you say radioactive decay, it means you undergo fusion or you undergo fission. I want to write down decay means you give up energy and you have a lower MC square and you become someone better and more stable. All right, so I want to write down here decay means you're giving out energy. Formal definition for radioactive decay, the two key word is spontaneous and random. So this nuclear reaction, it can be fusion, it can be fission, it's spontaneous. What does it mean? Let's suppose that all of you are radioactive, meaning you all will decay. But I want you all to decay faster so that you become more stable earlier. Am I right? So I want to increase the temperature. Does it help? No. Increasing the temperature or the pressure or any external condition, it will not help. You won't decay faster because of that. Because nuclear decay is spontaneous. That's all. What's the meaning of random? Random means that I do not know in my class which one of you will decay. I do not know. So it's being random. It's impossible to predict which nucleus will decay. So I put on here. I will not know who will decay. However, there's this thing called highlight the decay constant. Highlight over here. Whether the active decay is random, the probability of decay per unit time is called a decay constant. Let me write it down over here. Decay constant. There is something that I know. I will know the probability of decay per unit time. Let me give you an example. Suppose this classroom is uranium. And for uranium, I understand that for this element, the decay constant is 10%. What does it mean? It means that for uranium, every second, every second means per unit time, 10% will decay, example. So one out of 10 will decay every second. That's called the decay constant. It's a constant. It means that it will not change. It's unique to each of the element. So can I write down for you the definition of decay constant? Radio edit decay constant is defined as a probability of decay in one second. Now the symbol for decay constant, are you ready for the symbol? I'm going to write it down. And you may not like it because the symbol is the same as wavelength. So this decay constant is lambda. I think when we want to appreciate the meaning of a quantity, it's good to write down, let's say, example. Example for uranium, the decay constant is 10%. I put out 10%. 10% means in fraction, 0.1 is a probability. One out of 10 of you will decay every second. Because every second per unit time, I put down second in verse 1. Please remember. Decay constant is a constant. Is it a big or small number? You say small. I ask you how small. You say it must be smaller than one because it's probability. Now the decay constant is unique to the element. If I say uranium, decay constant is 10%, 0.1, right? Maybe another radioactive substance, cobalt 60, their decay constant might be higher or lower. Okay, less than one. Now, before I move on, uh, even though we know that every element will have its own constant decay constant, but why I know which one of the 10 will decay, I do not know. And that's why we say radioactive is random. The decay is random. I do not know which one of the 10. I only know one out of 10 of it will disappear, but I don't know which one. Okay, I cannot predict. Okay, that is the meaning of radioactive decay. Now, today in my lesson, I will have four equations. So slowly, after I cover first, second, third, fourth, you'll know that we are reaching the end of the syllabus. So it's something to be excited about. 
Okay, I'm going to start with my first equation of today. Number is a number, a number less than one. It represents the fraction or probability of decay every second. Think, if I take this number and multiply it by the number of students that I have, what will I get? You say very easy, you know? You take the probability of decay in one second, right? You multiply it by the total class size you have. Then what you get will be the total number of nuclei decaying every second. Is that right? So it's a very simple equation. It's a mathematical equation. So I can write it down over here. This one represents a number of nuclei. This one represents a decay constant, okay? Which of course you will know that it will be the unit will be second in verse one. You know why it's in per second only? Because probability got no unit, right? Probability is a ratio, mark, it's a fraction. One over ten, two over ten, no unit. Then this is nuclei. Then it will be equal to what? This one will be equal to the actual number of nuclei decay in one second. Now I give this a name. They call this the get ready, yeah? activity. So this is the actual number of nuclei decay in one second. Now, so what's the units of activity? Many students, when they first learn this chapter, they will tell the teacher, I'm confused. So what are you confused with? I always confuse between activity and lambda. I don't know what is the difference between them. I know that's what you're going to ask me very soon. So let me just address that problem. The pain is that A and lambda is all something new to you today at the same time. So you get mixed up, is that right? Do you remember last time when you studied quantum part one? You feel very, you, the pain is whereby you mix up work function and stopping potential. You, what is work function, what is stopping potential? You mix up, right? Because you learn two new things at the same time, you will mix up. So I help you address the problem. This thing is a number less than one. It's probability that you decay in one second. This thing is the actual number that decay in one second. You think about it, this is less than one, right? This one will be a big number, bigger than one, definitely, because the total number of nuclei you have is a lot. How much, you ask me? One mole itself gives you 6.02, 10 to the power 23. So it's a big number. So the actual number of nuclei decaying today, right now, right, depends on two things. Depends on how easy is it for you all to decay, call the decay constant, right? Also depends on how many students I have. The more students I have, even if the decay constant is the same for uranium, the more students I have, the more uranium nuclei will decay. All right, get the idea. Know the difference between A and lambda because you will get confused if I'm not clear over here. So this is the actual number of nuclei decaying per second. They define this as the rate of decay. So therefore, if the activity is 100, what does it mean? 100 nuclei decay in one second, that's all. Now, just to add on, in school, we use another alternative unit to represent nuclei per second. We use this unit, Becquerel, BQ. Nothing fanciful, please. If I say that the activity is 100 Becquerel, it just means that 100 of my students decay every single second. That's all. Finish. Now, this equation, I'm done with the first equation, but I want to extend it further. Now, if big N is the number of students I have, and A is the number of students that is decaying every second, I want to link this up to a differential equation. I can say it this way. I can say A is the number of nuclei decaying per unit time. I can do that, right? But it's not good. Do you know why it's not good to do it this way? I tell you the truth. Huh? The truth is it's not good to write down this as N over T. is because this N represents the actual number of Nuclei in the entire sample. And this N represents the number of nuclei that are decaying in that one second. So this N and this N represent different things. It's not good to do it this way. So your teacher and me, myself, will not do it this way. N over T equals lambda N. What if N, N cancer die? Am I right? So you know what we do? We use differential equation, dN dt. Now, when I say dN dt, at this stage, you are okay, right? Not so overwhelmed, right? Last time I said dN dt, oh, what is that? Now you know that dN dt means the change in the number of nuclei per unit time. 
Now, this thing over here, as I write down here, let me write down for you. Uh, just change the color, or don't need to change color. Just this represents the change in the number of nuclei. Is that right? Let me ask you. Let's say activity is 100 per curve. 100 per curve means 100 nuclei are decaying every second. Am I right that my class size get 100 students lesser every second? So is this change a positive change or a negative change? The answer is obvious. It's getting less and less. In this chapter, you will know that my class size can only get smaller, will never get bigger one. Am I right? So this change is a negative change. And that is the reason why I need to add a minus sign. I must say A is minus D and DT. You know why? I give you an example. If you say A is positive 100, I know 100 of my students decay every single second. It also means that due to the minus sign, the change in N is minus 100 every second. So that is consistent. So I have my equation, first equation done. A equal to lambda N. So remember, my lesson today, only four equations. Once I reach the fourth one, that means the end of syllabus. So you should be happy about this. The next one is relation between N and N naught. All right. This part, of course, I have not started. You will not know what I'm going to do. Huh? So I will tell you in general what I want to do first before I show you my second equation. I hope to be able to predict the future. Like right now, I see I got about 30 students. I want to know that uh, at a, two years later, same classroom, how many students will there be? I understand that the number of students I have will get less and less because so, you all are very active in nature. You will decay. And I want to know three years later, how many remaining. So therefore, I need a formula to calculate how many students I have remaining in the classroom after two years, after three years, after four years. So what is that formula? I have to give it to you. Okay, How to use it, I will show you. How to derive it, I will show you also. Now I am at the stage of giving you that formula. Okay, So the formula is like this. I write it down here. N2 over N1 equal to E to the power of minus lambda T. Well, it's a lot, right? If you look at this equation, it's a whoa, what is that? <laughs> you, I don't think you will like it, isn't it? Now, what is N1? And what's N2? N1, N2 refers to the number of nuclei remaining in my classroom. N1 is the initial number I start off with. Let's say 100 students. N2 is the number of nuclei remaining undecayed, meaning the one that has not decayed after a time t. t is the time duration that has passed. Very quick. I'm showing you how to use it. Do not think about how I get it first. Later on, I will tell you how I get it. Now I'm using, talking about how to use it. What is lambda? Oh, this one I know. This one I know. This one is a constant, right? The one that's less than one. That's a, a constant. That's lambda. That's right. Over here. So which means that if I know the time duration, let's say I want to predict 10 years later how many nuclei remaining. I know the initial number of nuclei. I know the probability of decay every single second. Then I sub in, sub in, sub in, I can get N2. That's the idea. So N2 is the variable. Time is the variable. Any equation in math or physics, highlight the variable. Must highlight. A student who do not know who are the two variables in the equation cannot solve the question fast. Now, very funny. Let me ask, uh, let me start with Darren. This E, right? What do you think is the number for this E? I mean, if I start in the T, I start in the lambda, I start in the initial number of nuclei, I will know what is the final number of nuclei remaining, right? After time T, right? So what is this E? Uh? Say again? What do you think it is? Say again? It's a small element. No, I mean, what does E represent the number? Do you know the number E? Say again? The what? The, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why I asked this question? Uh? That was when I marked my exam, the exam paper last time, right? And Mark, eh, a lot of people got it wrong. Eh? The question was very easy. A lot of people get it wrong. I do not know why. 
Then again, look at what happened over there because they did not show they are working. You know what they use this as? You know why? They couldn't use the 1.6, 10 minus 19. So sad, right? And funny at the same time, right? They, they think this E is 1.6, 10 minus 19. This is exponential. Exponential function, you know, the E. Uh, you, it's in your calculator. It's 2.7, 2, 2. what? Uh, one. Huh? Can already, that's okay. So 2.718 can already, right? The exponential. <laughs> they write down one by system minus 19. Don't know what the laugh will be angry, right? Okay, so this is the exponential. You know what I thought about this being exponential function now? Meaning if you plot the graph of N2 against time, right? It will be an exponential decreasing function. Is that right? Do you want Mr. Sim to help you uh, put N2 the subject? Let's write, write it again. And N1, let's put it there. So maybe it's nicer like this. Is that okay? So you can see that when you plot N2 against time, let me circle this one. This is N2, okay? Then against time, right? You see that the y axis is N2, the x axis is time. Your guess what is this thing? This thing will be your initial number of nuclei, is that right? Which is N1. Your school will call it N0. I call it N1 for a reason, okay? N1 is the initial, N2 will be the final number after time t. Now, this is an exponential function. Can we talk a bit about math over here? Okay, nothing to do with physics now. Huh? Now, exponential function to ask is a curve. Huh? You ask any JC student, exponential function means it tends to zero when the s axis tends to infinity. To them, it's like this. But do you know that there are many different curves? For example, quadratic function, happy face, is also a curve. Is that right? Uh, y equal to 1 over s is also a curve, right? Y equal to 1 over s. Do you know what makes exponential function so special? Let me tell you about the special unit thing that is pertaining only to exponential function. If you were to look at the time it takes for the y axis, the number, to go to half its value, you look at the time, huh? okay? The time will be the same for the same number of nuclei now to go to half its value, you always the same. You don't get that with one over s function. You don't get that with happy face quadratic function. Exponential function is unique in the way that it always takes the same time for the y value to go to half its value. We decide to give this time a name. We call that the half life. It's always the same. Now, exponential function is a mathematical function, right? We use that to analyze a lot of trends. For example, let's say we are very concerned that the COVID graph is an exponential function. Let's say it's a, not a negative function, but it increase. It's an increasing function. Let's say the power is not negative, but it's a positive power. So that means that if, let's say one month, it takes one month for the number of COVID cases to double, it means you wait for one more month, it will double again. Is that right? And if you wait for one more month, it will double again, you know? So this is exponential function, the power of exponential function. And of course, if in the reverse case, we are looking at a number going down. That if you wait for one more month, or one more half-life, it will go down to half again. One more half-life, it will go to half again. So how do we set a question on this? The examiner will, in paper two, ask you to look at the graph of number of nuclei and how it decreases with time. And then they say, from the graph, read off from the graph, the half-life. The student will read off, uh, for half-life, right? But then sometimes they give you like two marks, three marks. How can you give me two marks for reading off to half the smaller square? So easy. So at this moment, you say, uh, maybe I read off one more time. So you read off one time, you read off one more time, right? You find the half-life, half-life, half-life. It should be exactly the same, right? But it's not the same. It's not exactly the same. It should be the same, but it's not exactly the same. Because radioactive decay is, is what? Random. That's why you always want to take the average. Because it's random. It's about the same. So you read off the half-life, you read off one more time, read off one more time, you get the average of the half-life. 
You can get it from the graph just now. But then, at this moment, just to come back to what I'm doing now, I'm teaching you how to use the equation. Yeah? I have not proved to you yet, but I'm giving you the equation to allow us to calculate the number of nuclei remaining after a certain time duration. I'm showing you how they can set the question. Then they will say, uh, from this graph, for, will you be able to find for me the lambda? You, you say, not possible, the lambda is on top. And then they will ask you, what will you do? So can I ask you, to find the lambda, what will you do? You will? You will learn both sides, you linearize it. The idea is to bring the unknown downwards. So you learn both sides. So can you help me? If you learn the y axis, you become learn n2. How about the right hand side? And not E will be just one. And what is most important next? Highlight. You cannot solve any question if you do not know who are the variable. Not N2 is not a variable, is that right? And time is a variable. So therefore, circle this. This is non N2. Instead of plotting N against T, you plot non N against T is a much better choice. Why? One look, I can tell you that the Intercept is non N1. Is that right? So for the intercept, I can give you the initial number of nuclei. And of course, when you all plot the graph, you will have data point. And decay, radioactive decay is random. You expect that there will be a distribution above and below the best fit, and you draw the best fit to be well balanced. And then from the best fit, you will get from the gradient, what will you get? For the equation, you can see it's in the form of y equal to ms plus c. The gradient will be the negative lambda. So you put out negative lambda. So this is the y intercept. This is the gradient. So this is a typical way we set a question. So what I've done so far, I have, so at every moment, every 10 minutes, I will consolidate. Huh? The first part of my lesson, I went through an equation, which is based on purely common sense. That if you take the lambda, which is less than one, you multiply by the total number of nuclei you have, you'll get the actual number of nuclei decaying in one second. So this equation is based on purely common sense, equation one. Then I remind you that in a radioactive decay, the number will get less and lesser. So the delta n will be negative. So if you want to say a is dn dt, you should say a is minus dn dt. And that is a fair statement, right? Then second part of my last uh, equation, I look at the number of nuclei. After some time t, I ask you how many nuclei remaining undecayed. We use this equation. I thought about graph as well, about how I can set a database question on this equation. I still own you one more thing. What's that? I have not show you how I get this equation. So I'm going to do it now. The HOW, how to get the equation. So over here is the how. Now, from the beginning of the lesson, you learn that A is minus, A is equal to lambda N. You also know that A is minus dN dt. True? How do I move from equation one, which is here? How do I move from here and change this thing to become this thing? Not easy, oh? Look at this, it's very different. It's very different, look at this. So I'm gonna show you that from equation one, I can get equation two, but think about it. If you use your math to change this to this, I need N1, N2. N1 is the initial number of nuclei. N2 is the, up, the, the number of nuclei remaining after time t. So it seems that N1, N2 is the limits of integration. Is that right? You think about math. Is that apparent to you? The N1, N2, initial, final, initial, final. So there is some integration involved. So I'm going to change this thing into an integration. From differential, I change it into integration. Not so difficult. Minus over, okay, wait. I don't want the minus here. I just get rid of the integral sign, which is dn. Integrate dt, get ready. I move the dt to the right-hand side, can integration. Okay, before you switch off, I say, oh, I don't like it. I don't know why people don't like integration, but 
before you switch off, I have one statement to make first. So far, A-level have never test us on proving this equation, never. They only test us on how to use. And that's why how to use is more important. I thought about it already, right? Now it's on proving, not so important, but I will go through this as your school will go through that as well. Okay, this is the end. DT is here. So if I want to integrate anything that is with respect to N, I will put here. Uh. If you want to integrate anything with respect to time, I will put here, right? True or not? So therefore, can I ask you, this big N over here, should I put on the left side or the right side? Left, left side. So it will be 1 over N. N. Then the number is the number, less than 1. Number, I can put anywhere, right? So don't, I, I can put anywhere. Uh. I put here, okay? Can. Then there's a minus sign. Also, I just put the right-hand side easier, very neat. Okay? Now, Richard, if I go to integrate this, uh, you're going to give me the plus C, the constant. I, I don't want it. You know that I don't want the plus C. Is that right? So I must put in the limits. Am I right? So what's the lower limit for N? That'll be initial. So you can see how I slowly transform this equation to what you want. Eh, huh? What you want is N1, this N2, upper limit N2. Good. What's the initial time, the time variable? Zero, uh, zero. After time t, t is the final. Is that right? So I'm ready to integrate. Rishen, are you good in math? Excellent. Uh. He said you're excellent. But before I ask him to integrate 1 over n, I always feel that it's good to remind them that I'm not trying to differentiate. Is that right? Because in case you differentiate. Because uh, the first thing in your mind is you differentiate when I say 1 over n. So I don't want you to differentiate, I want you to integrate. So what do you get when you integrate 1 over n? Very good. He's indeed very good. Huh? So then for the limits, I put it down. Later on, I will put it in. All right, then this one will be minus what? Minus lambda? T, right? Okay, I don't even need the T and 0. I mean, T minus 0 is just lambda T, right? So just leave it there. Wait on. Now I'm going to put in N2 and N1, right? Huh? This one you put in, it will be ln N2, you minus away ln N1. Okay, simplify ln n2 minus away ln n1. I will get ln n2 over n1. Very good. You're also very good in math. All right. So that is what we have. Look at how close I am to the final product. Happy, right? Huh? Happy, all. Now, uh, when the ln right is actually a log function, you know, right? But the base is e. And that's where the e comes from just now. Right? The e, you know, the e. So it's a base e, right? So the base e to the power of minus lambda t will be the ratio of n2 over n1. So I write down here, n2 over n1 will be the base e to the power of minus lambda t. I have proven my equation. Consolidate now. Huh? How many equations have you learned so far, Weyan? How many? Uh, Weyan, yeah, how many? Two. The first one is a equal to lambda n. The next one is n2 or n1 equal to e to the power of minus lambda t. Hold on. Uh. This equation, personal command, uh, not important. You don't need to write down first. Personal command is that this equation is normally used if you want to find what happened after a duration of time. True? This equation, a equal to lambda n, is to use to find at this moment. What is the number of nuclei I have now? And how many nuclei will decay now in one second? This is now. This one is after a duration of time. That is personal command. So that next time I will know which one to use. Am I right? Now, I want to go on to talk about half-life. 